The show is made possible in part by its supporting sponsors. Blue Otter Power Group of Companies, Joe's Discount Tire, and AskGuy.ca. One of the things I love about doing these interviews is you just never know who I'm going to chat with, first of all. And uh, sometimes we see people and we hang out with them for a little while and we don't see them for a little while and then we kind of do again. And, and Adam Dumont is one of those people that I'm, I'm happy to call a friend. Um, but we don't hang out all the time, but we still uh, we can reach out anytime. How are you doing, buddy? Good, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, and we'll talk about our relationship that's happened over the last few years in a little bit. You know, it's been... A lot of fun and a lot of positivity, but mm -hmm. uh, these interviews are, are getting to know people like you in our community, and um, let's start by where you're from. Are you from Sarnia originally? Nope. Born and raised in uh, Orangeville, Ontario. Oh, okay. So uh, it was about well known as a lacrosse town. Oh, right, right. Yeah. The, the Did you play lacrosse? Born. No. No? So, so, you were, so you were in the wrong town. Yeah, I had to leave. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but uh, yeah, no, grew up Orangeville, went uh, obviously uh, uh, public school, high school there, and yeah. then left, went to uh, Western University, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I met my uh, wife, uh, Michelle, and okay. she's from here. Nice. What so, was what was public school and high school like for you? I always like to ask that question because I think yeah. uh, school has a lot to do with where we end up going. Yeah, I think uh, public school is just kind of a, a blur. I don't know. Looking back at it, it's <laughs> yeah. forty some odd years. Like it's a, it was a while ago, but uh, I don't know. It was, it was it was fun. You know, I, I was you know the, I guess biggest memories was looking back at it to to the person I am now is really wasn't. Uh, I was I was social. I was pretty easy going. Yeah. Um, didn't really get too high, too low. Like. It's 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 funny you look back and you're like yeah, that's and the, when you see your kids you're kind of like yeah that's kind of like me right you know like yeah. you know so don't get too high too low don't worry, you know so you kind of yeah. give them that same advice yeah you'll be fine you know like yeah. um, the uh, high school like I, I I had I had one really really good teacher and I had him for two years Mr. Fessenden awesome guy uh, you know you looked at him like a, like a, like a almost a parent in a way and mm -hmm. he's not doing too well actually right now apparently he's not mm -hmm. doing well but uh anyway so best wishes to mr pheasant to get so you stayed in touch no no i just oh. heard through you know the grapevine okay. and it got back to me i guess my, you know my parents my mom knows that uh, i'm pretty fond of him as a teacher so i had him in grade five i think in grade seven and you know pretty formative years he was the one that uh i would argue got me uh into volleyball Oh yeah, uh, right. it was pretty. It was pretty good volleyball. That's why I got to Western. I played on national teams and stuff like that wow. growing up. So I was like, I was a good volleyball player. Uh, I was only grade six on the team. He picked me, and <laughs> you know, I was growing, learning from him. And then he also got me into singing. Believe it or not, right? Uh, there was a big play in public school, and uh, he asked. I, I didn't try out for any of the roles, and then he, you know, kind of pulled me aside. He's like, "How come you haven't uh, tried out for one of the parts in the play?" I was like, I don't know. I don't really want to do it. He's like, don't you think you should try? You don't know, right? It's one of those things. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. He's like, why don't you give it a try? We're meeting in the library on this date. So I'm like, all right. So it's funny, but he had the same conversation because it was all athletes. There was like me, a couple others, you know, three or four that he was like, you should try this, right? So we get there. I don't know. I sang row, row, row your boat. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's really? My, for an audition? There for my go. audition, right? And then... Uh, well, you know, you were in great shape. So, yeah. So... Don't I get the lead? He gives me the lead, right? And I'm just like, you know, you feel. Do you remember kinda, what was the play? I think it was going west. I think it was what it was called. Okay. And uh, I had to play this city slicker type of a guy who <laughs> went west and just wasn't getting it, you know. Right. And uh, I don't remember any of the song. I don't remember any of the lines, but I do remember it being really fun, mm -hmm. right? Being on stage. That was my first experience being yeah. on stage. Didn't have an issue being in front of people. No. Right? Didn't have an issue of singing in front of people. Uh, didn't have an issue of, you know, like learning all those lines and, and, you know, freezing up, you know, it was, there was, uh, was the first time you got the adrenaline rush of that, right? Like, and you know, being on yeah. stage in front of people, there yeah. is a adrenaline rush. There is a piece to it. Yeah. Unlike anything else yeah. in life. It's a love. And it, it can be addicting, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a weird thing. But, uh, anyway, so Mr. Fezzanin, circle back, that was grade five. Wow. So then you skip ahead grade seven and, you know, more of the same. It was just building confidence, uh, you know, just knowing that uh, he could, 
explain things in a way. Oh, he was also a chess club guy. Oh, yeah. So he'd also get us involved in chess, which I yeah. wasn't really good at. But, man, he got some of the guys that you would never think yeah. would want to do it, started it, tried it. And, man, they got good. Yeah. It was hilarious. He loved walking by. He's like, you know what? I think, uh, I think Mark should play uh, Brody today. It'd be a good match. And then, anyway, it was, he was, he'd whisper that. He's like, I think on recess we're going to get I'm like, So we'd want to go watch. He should have been a sports agent. Maybe. Right. It was, he was awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So uh, really, really, you know, highly respect him. So uh, if anything, those are my most fond memories in, uh, in public school there. Um, right. I was pretty athletic growing up. So we played baseball, uh, volleyball, tried soccer was pretty good at track, um, but that's that's where my life would lead, would be in the athletic world. You were the guy that, that played everything then, were you? Or a lot of them. I tried. Like, I, I, yeah. I played um, uh, trumpet in the, in, the, in the band, like cool. in our school band, you know, uh, just because my buddies were like, oh, let's try it. All right, let's pick it up. So, again, I wasn't afraid of doing stuff like that. Uh, uh, tried cross-country running, tried cross-country skiing. Like, you know, I was just always okay at trying something. Um, I was terrible at hockey. Oh, yeah. I had a great slap shot and yeah. I was big. So, you know, I could muscle my way around, but just didn't have the conditioning. Didn't know until later, uh, foreshadowing until right. why. But uh, then, uh, yeah, I just, I, I found my love for, for uh, volleyball in grade nine. Yeah. Ten, maybe, when I got looked at and uh, made my way in uh, that way as far as, you know, zeroing in on a sport that would actually take you somewhere. Um, Is that what you wanted to do? Did you want to <clears throat> somewhere professionally get into sports, if you could? I, I just... I mean, that, every kid goes, oh, I want to do that. But, like, seriously. Yeah. So, obviously, I didn't, you know, you go through life trial and error and everything. Um, I didn't really pick anything out until, uh, like, that one tryout. I had uh, uh, these two twin brothers in, uh, in, in high school, and they wanted me to go try out for this volleyball team in Kitchener, Ontario. And I found out the reason why was because they, they would get an extra shirt. <laughs> like a, you know, like, so you, they, they got an extra OVA t-shirt or something like that. I think that was their motivation to ask people to go. And I was like, all right, I'll go try out. So I went and tried out for this team. And, uh, and then we all made it, all three of us. Cool. My parents were like, ah, oh, it's all right, you know, because now we can kind of maybe share rides with that family and vice right, versa. We right. could take them. And, you know, it wasn't too overcommittal, you know, as far as day-to-day, week-to-week hours over there and it wasn't too too far right Kitchener from Orangeville is not too far um anyway learned a lot but I was playing uh, an age above uh, so I was I was younger so I just tried to take everything in and I, I liked it it was fun right and that coach was I think he was in his 60s if he wasn't he oh was yeah in his 70s that guy right. he looked like he was on his way out so he was old to but, you <laughs> but I'll tell you what the guy moved like a gazelle could like if he demonstrated any aspect volleyball is very um dynamic sport like yep. you got to be flexible you got to be strong you got to be balanced i played balanced. It in grade seven and eight too so I it's get it. it's yeah. a it's a different sport right and people that like it they get it they understand mm-hmm. but it's a very hard you learn it late in life because like it's a it's not a sport that you can put your kids into and expect them to know it right it's it's a game of mistakes it's weird yeah um anyway he played uh, i think in poland or something like that oh wow and uh anyway taught us and uh, very grateful for for him you know teaching the stuff and from there, that summer, same twins that was on that team said you, co- you should go try out for the, the regional team. So in, in Ontario, there's, there's six regions. And we were in Region 5, which is Toronto. So, okay. you know, um, I can't remember all of them. I think Region 3 was like London area. Region 6 was like North Bay. Anyway, the whole province is holding these tryouts. And we were in Toronto, the most competitive one, right? So you go to tryouts and there's hundreds of kids. And... The twins, they were a year older than me, so they went and tried out for their age-appropriate one, and then I went to my uh, age-appropriate one. And that's where I, I met my next uh, coach-ish, uh, Joseph. And just a little guy from the Caribbean or something. I can't remember exactly where he's from. But, man, that guy could jump through the roof. Couldn't believe it. Really? He, was, he might have been six feet, maybe. In volleyball, that's really short. And uh, But would jump over anyone in the gym. Just wow. And, again, he was probably in his... Late 30s. Okay. So again, a, a, a guy just, you know, loving volleyball that much and putting the coaching hours in. And I remember, uh, you know, he, he, he have all these sayings and, you know, uh, he's like, you don't know what you can do until you do more. And that was a big one. And then he was like, your last name is Dumond. 
do do more, do more, do more, like, do that more. Was, that was his thing. <laughs> so anytime he would always get to me, it would be stuff like that. that. He was like, do more, do more, come on, do more. And so he's always egging you on because he's like, you got to be uncomfortable <clears throat> to know where you're getting better at, right? Yeah, get out of your and skin a bit. Exactly. And anyway, lo and behold, uh, hundreds of kids trying. I made that team. I was tall, and he said the only reason you made it was because you were coachable. And that was his big thing with me. He's like, you, he's, and you were a very uh, visual learner. So mm -hmm. I can tell you what to do all day, but until I show you what to do, you won't know what I'm saying. And then he, he's like, just do this. I'm like, oh, okay. And then you could do it. And then, so in volleyball, that's like half the game. Yeah. It's like, just do what I do and try to keep doing it consistently. So I went from, let's call it uh, high school volleyball to yeah. club volleyball to then regional volleyball. <laughs> And then in the regional tournament at the end of the summer, uh, you get together for your big provincial tournament. And Region 5 was pretty dominant because we're in Toronto, so yeah. we're in the finals. And uh, I think we won that year. I can't remember. I think we did. And I was starting. I went from not starting to ended up starting. And then um, from there, Team Ontario came calling. So in one summer, I go from high school playing wow. to a provincial team. And the provincial team was just... You get together for two weeks with the best guys in the province and you just have a two-week camp or i think it was a week two weeks ten days and you just get coached by some pretty high level coach it's really big i've live streamed some of those events down in toronto with some yeah. friends of mine and it and remember the first time i went i'm like oh it's volleyball yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. then we were like and then that wow, coach i can't, I can't recall huge. the guy's name but he, he said the same comment to me he was like you're pretty coachable he's like you weren't on our radar until someone at at the uh, regional tournament said, hey, check out number whatever, 12, 15, right. whatever I was. And they just watched me and he's like, you had, you know, you took direction extremely well from your coach. He tells you to do this, you went and did that. So I went and talked to your coach. He's like, most coachable kid I've had in however many years. Right. And he said the same thing. He's like, he didn't lie. He's like, you just, you do exactly what we tell you to do after you see that it's, as, again, yeah. visual learning thing. So I went from there to there in, in a matter of, of months, right? So then yeah. I was like, maybe I'm on to something, right? So then from there, it was just like, well, you made the provincial team, so you have to keep going, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's you know, next, right? Yeah. So then I got uh, you know, really excited and played different club teams, met incredible like-minded individuals playing volleyball. So I, I had mo more motivation than any high school player to try to do good in school because I knew the next stage was going to be university, right? Right. And I was not a good student, but I chipped away at it. And then uh, talk about teachers, Mr. Yeager. Of all people, big <laughs> shout out to him. Uh, he was my uh, high school math teacher. So his daughter, Tracy, uh, I went to her. I think I told her I was struggling in math. And then uh, I can't remember how it happened, but she got me or her, her, her parents both were math teachers. Okay. So uh, him being the head of math got me into his class. And he had me in his class in grade 10, 11, 12, and OAC, back when you had OACs. Right, yeah. And he just, he, I didn't have to ask. <laughs> I always was, you know, and he said, sit in the front. And when I get you, when I ask you to get to the board, get to the board and do what we say. And he knew, he's like, he talked about it all the time. He's like, as long as Adam understands what's going on, I know more than 50% of you guys know what's going on. Right. But I wasn't afraid to ask questions or I wasn't afraid to get up to the board and Try to try. solve the problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then where I got stuck, half the class would get stuck. So he's like, not only are you learning, but you're dragging half the class. You're a leader. Right well, no, that's. But that's, he loved. He, yeah. His big thing was, he, I love teaching athletes because you guys don't care when you get stuff wrong. You're just that's looking to bite. You're, you're trying to get a goal. Yeah. You strike out all the time. Fail your way to success. Right. So he <laughs> yeah. loved it. Right. So him and uh, anyway, I had him. So big shout out to him. He was wow. awesome. Uh, and I needed that calculus mark in OAC oh, to get to university. Calculus. <laughs> I didn't, you know, telling my kids, eventually I'm going to tell my kids I had to take calculus, right? And looking back, I'm like, I can't believe, you know, calculus, algebra, trigonometry, all this right. stuff. I'm like, no chance, right? But <laughs> I can't even struggled spell my calculus. way through it. And then uh, universities were calling left and right for, you know, I had three uh, full, uh, one full ride p partial scholarships in the States, right? Because I was really good at volleyball. Like yeah. people want, but then they were like, how good are you at school? Like, what are your SAT marks? What are your, mm. what are your grades? And I'm just like, terrible. And they're like, well, get them up. And, but they got on me early enough. So it was grade 12. They were like, get these marks up. And I told them, and the teachers rally around you, right? Because they're like, oh yeah, you are going somewhere and you care about the grades. So if you care, we're going to give you extra work. We're going to, so I, I would do some SAT work with my, Mr. Yeager. I would, um, 
you know, even though I didn't go to the States for school, it was, it was a big option, right? Like, uh, and then my schools in the States were huge. It was uh, UC Santa Barbara. So wow. if you don't know where that is, they send you a scouting program. And they, the first thing out of the envelope was the picture of the campus, which is on the coast in Malibu. Beautiful California. Or Santa Barbara, sorry. Right. Uh, and then uh, uh, University of Hawaii was the other one. Well, oh, sign me up for that one. <laughs> and, then, uh, <laughs> and then the other one was uh, Brigham Young University, which is in Utah. Wow. And uh, they were the ones that offered me a full scholarship. And where's mom and dad in all of this? Like, so, you know, they're, somebody's got to be driving you around and pushing you through. Yeah. They were on board with all of this. Yeah, and that's the thing with volleyball. It wasn't too, too much driving. It was a lot of tournament driving. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, practice-wise. I got to an age of 16 and I could start driving myself. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, big help. They loved it because it wasn't as an expensive sport. Right. Versus, <laughs> like, like hockey. Yeah, thousands of dollars yeah. in hockey versus a few hundred yeah, right. Volleyball. Here's a volleyball. Like, yeah, wore out. Yeah, you know, <laughs> some so, good shoes. Right. So they didn't care about spending a little bit of money on good shoes, yeah. ankle braces, knee pads. Come on, yeah, that's yeah. it. It's really it. So then it was just you know, uh, getting into a gym and, and getting in the right coaches and stuff like that. So uh, it was great, and they never really said no. And it was always, if anything, they held it over my head as to reasons why I should do my chores or get my grades <laughs> up. Right. Yeah. So it was a good good tool to for them to manipulate me. You right, know, doing the right thing in the right and, direction, yeah, in the right way. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's my that's my high school, grade school story. So I mean, uh, there's more than I expected in that conversation. I had no way. I knew you you would said a while before when we first met. Oh yeah, I played volleyball, but you yeah. never really yeah, past expanded life, right? there, like, right? So that's was, incredible. It was fun. Yeah, I made the national team for my age for I think two years in a row. Nice, under seventeen or under eighteen or something like that, and then. Uh, the school started calling and then went to Western and met Michelle. I played at University of Western right. uh, for multiple years and that was really fun. Um, but looking back, the biggest thing was just, you know, it was, university was growing up and finding a life. And then school was maybe third, right. maybe not even. And I you had, said that's where you, met, too. where you met so your I, wife? Yeah, I would, yeah, I would put work in there before I, uh, school. Right. It was just get through school you're like you got to university it's a growing just, experience for a lot of people it's it was a big uh i'm sure all the kids at school right now this is you know first uh where are we here this school's maybe first month of university all these kids yeah are, yeah september all well, these we're kids are getting hit over the head with all the nuances yeah, of where yeah. do you go to class the fact that your teacher does not care about you <laughs> um you're you're in a class with hundreds of kids no one's no one cares if you're there or not yeah. Uh, so a lot of uh, eye-opening things happening right now with all those college kids. But yeah, had to do it. Um, was in the gym every day, uh, whether it was practice every day. And we were, volleyball at university level is uh, pretty intense because it's, it's every day, but for the whole year. Wow. So if you go to track or um, football or something like another sport, which is, you know, pretty demanding, but you're done after the season, right? Like the season's yeah. done at like Christmas time. So then you can worry about school and whatever. We were in the gym every day. And then some days a week, you're morning practice, and then you're in the weight room, and then you have full gym practice. Like, there's two practices a day, and if not three on some. It was pretty demanding sport. Wow. So I did go from a full course load to I can't handle any of this to I took the absolutely bare minimum I could. Because, again, <laughs> I, I did not care that I was in university. I cared that I was there, but I didn't care that I was doing terrible there. I was just, just get through the classes. Right. Because I cared more about volleyball. I was like, where's yeah. next? Where's next? I was on this unbelievable rocket ship of, you know, getting somewhere. I was the first rookie to start at University of Western in who knows how many years. It was crazy. Nice. I got picked on like you wouldn't believe in the, yeah. in the volleyball world because every other team that would we'd be playing, they'd be like, everyone else on this team is four or five years in, the, in that kid's first year university. And I played left side, which is a pretty demanding. So yeah. all the serves come to you. Right. And uh, so you get served. But you fooled them, eh? Well, <laughs> I held my own, but there were some games, yeah, you get served off the, you get served off the court. Yeah. These guys, we, I was 18 year old, uh, years old, 18, 19 when I got there. But these were men then, like three, four, five years of them hitting the gym, like I say, every day. Yeah. There were guys who were 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", 220, 230. These wow. guys were monsters. <laughs> and they could hit a serve like harder than you'd have ever taken a spike. And they're serving it at you. It was incredible. It was oh. eye-opening. It was. It was. And oddly enough, I'll stop talking about. No, volleyball no, no. This is great. Is volleyball is a very, very competitive sport in Canada versus the states. Very competitive. Oh, interesting. So just like you can take um, 
there's only so many scholarships to give out, right? Right. In all of the U.S. And before they were given scholarships in Canada, I was playing at that time. So as a good athlete, I could have gone to the States and paid through the nose to go to a, a good school, but I could have stayed in Canada and played at Western, close to home. Yeah. The national team coach was my coach in university. So why be pulled? And the thing was, they go to the States and play some American teams. The American teams come up and play us every once in a while. And we whoop them all the time. Really? So we ended up playing in a tournament out in Alberta. And uh, it was, uh, what was it called? The Can-Am tournament. They would bring up four or five teams from the States. They would invite four or five teams from Canada. So usually it's the better teams in Canada. Um, <laughs> and uh, they uh, came up, so it was like an 18 tournament or whatever. So we had like UCLA, Pepperdine, um, UC Santa Barbara was one of the schools. Long Beach was there. I think Ohio State was there. Anyway, so big, big schools in the States. And we'd play them in this Can-Am tournament wow. every year. And uh, it, was, it was always a back and forth. There was Canadian teams beating American teams, American teams beating Canadian. So it was a very, very, uh, from a competitive point of view, very equal at the, at the higher level. Right. Um, and, Which is uh, where you want to be. Right. So I got a partial scholarship to go to UC Santa Barbara. And here I am at Western University playing UC Santa Barbara at this tournament. <laughs> and right. they were like, you're the kid that, uh, I was like, yeah. And the coaches knew me. And we shook hands afterwards. And, um, you know, I, again, being a rookie, I wasn't great. But I, I think I went four for four on my kills. I think I got an ace, a couple blocks. I was, I was relevant. Yeah, yeah. And I was a rookie. And that's when they were just like, you know, who knows? I would like to think that they were like, darn it. We should have paid up for this guy and given him a full ride. Right. You know, because he's starting with these monsters. Well, should have, would have. Who knew? Who knew, yeah. right? Uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so did they uh, call you the kid? Was that your? Was that a nickname, <laughs> or you just no, were no. that kid? I, I have a nickname, and it stuck with me for for since I was a kid. I don't. I think it's Dewey is my nickname. Okay. I don't know. It's probably because of Dumond. Dumond, think, yeah, right. 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 Uh, yeah, my uh, my mom's friend gave it to me. I think, and it just stuck ever since. And then my mom started calling me it, and then right. all of a sudden, all the teams start parents start catching on, and they're like, oh. So yeah, some of my best friends, they only call me Dewey. Cool. What a great story. I mean, I, I, hello, great way to start off this interview. And that's uh, it's one of the reasons why I always ask that question to everybody is school. Because, I th again, that's obviously had a huge impact on you. I mean, you talked about teachers in there and coaches. And and uh, you remember some philosophies, I guess, that were that were taught to you. Like do more. Wasn't great and, at, yeah, I wasn't great at school yeah but you know you put things in the athletic world and you got teachers that care about you yeah. you know yeah some things stick right so you just so now here we are and it's post university for a few years yeah. what was next after university did you did you get out and you know you met your wife and and or wife to be i guess at the time um and then you got into work yeah so at western it was just a lot of fun i really didn't care about school as much other than just pass so I can play volleyball, yeah. right? I was looking to maybe go professional or, or uh, <clears throat> continue on with the national program, something yeah. like that. And then I met Michelle. So my, my coach at university was our national team assistant coach. So that's why I went to Western. But then he had a falling out with the school and ended up going to McMaster University. Okay. So then I kind of, you know, hear about this in the summertime. Uh, and I'm like, well, I'm going to Mac. If he's going to Mac, I'm going to Mac. So then I call Mac and they're like, yes, yeah, send us your transcript. And then they're like, uh, you're gonna have to start year one all over again. We're not taking any of your credits. I didn't have good enough grades in university uh, to transfer the credits over. So we don't care that you can play volleyball. <laughs> right. Right. But there was a school that did. Uh -huh. So Winnipeg heard what was going on and they're like, they flew me out and they said, yeah, yeah we'll take all your credits. Plus we'll, it, back then they could give scholarships. So I was like, they'll pay for my tuition and everything. And nice. I was like, wow, that's impressive, right? So I was like, I said, yes. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll be here. And they thought I could transfer mid season, which was December at the time, because I was red shirting to get too complicated. Once I heard about my coach leaving, I decided not to play volleyball at Western that following year because I was going to transfer. Mm -hmm. So why start playing with the team? Because technically yeah. you have to sit out a year, which is called redshirting if you're going to transfer to another school. Oh, okay. So I was technically redshirting. Um, Western volleyball kind of went down quite a bit that year, and I didn't really care to play, and I was looking to transfer. So, And then Winnipeg heard, and they thought, well, because of your circumstances, your coach left, we think we can argue with whatever governing body to get you to start playing. You can play with us in January. Okay. So I was like, all right. So I came home with, uh, yeah, I'm going to Winnipeg, you know, like, here we go. And uh, that same time, I started dating Michelle. 
and it was one of those like what will you regret more kind of situation mm. it was it was tough sure very it tough be. and uh you know because she was i'll tell you what she looked like britney spears man <laughs> like good looking britney spears maybe not now britney spears but yeah okay i get you it was crazy she was uh at western too again you know she she's stand out and uh yeah so anyway it was one of those like what are you gonna do you're gonna you're gonna go and i thought and it was the guidance counselors that mm. said, look, you can go, but like you're not getting any of your money back, um, even for not finishing out the year. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll finish out the year because I'll, I'll at least get these credits carried over right. and I'll start fresh next year. So that's why I said to Winnipeg. And then all of a sudden, Michelle and I happened. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere. This is it. You know, and then life hits you with like, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to play volleyball for what, two more years, three more years after maybe university, try to play. Yeah pro somewhere um, I started talking to guys who went pro who were better than me and their experience wasn't great yeah yeah you know because there are other countries out there that can pump out these guys you got to go play Europe in a country yeah you know where it's it sounds great that you're playing pro but it's maybe not what you expect so yeah. I was like well all we right. hear the word pro and we think a whole bunch of money yeah and it's not yeah, <laughs> it's not always they that pay for way. Your living, you they maybe pay for your car. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. have to. You don't have to pay to eat, kind of thing. But right. You're, but yeah. I'm not making any money. Yeah, and yeah. then all of a sudden you find out you're in uh, some league in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah. You know, not really maybe getting the greatest health care. I don't know. Right. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, let's. Uh, and let's, here's Michelle. Right. Right. And right. I was like, yeah, you can't. Life choice. Yeah. All of time. a sudden, yeah. big time. So a lot of conversations about that. I bet. Uh, yeah, it was. For me, it was, it was just like, it seemed like the right thing to do. And I thought too, like, if, you know, I met some really good friends then too. Mm -hmm. And they were good. Like, look, if you're going to make it, you're going to make it. So work hard here, play here. Yeah. So then I, I played the following years and kept dating Michelle and I finished at Western. I ended up getting two degrees at Western, which is nuts. I didn't yeah. think, you know, you just, I fell in love with philosophy mm. and uh, psychology. Right. And uh, says just, he who did not do so good in school. Well, <laughs> like I didn't do well in those classes those either. True. No, but still, but those are those are those are not easy courses. They I'm were sure. classes that motivated me to go to work yeah, or go to class, yeah. right? So it was just kind of getting up and uh, you know asking the big questions. You know, mm. I remember leaving those classes like they were just entertaining, right? Like philosophy was great. The first teacher was just, you know, I don't care if you get the question wrong, just argue it. Yeah. And, and then he's like, most lawyers have to go through some philosophy classes. Yeah. And that's it. Just <laughs> argue, right? Just figure out stuff and. You know, here's some great people that thought great stuff back in the day, and here's what they, you know, they're right or wrong. We don't have to agree with them. Just argue. So that was great. I remember one professor picked me out of the class. He was like, I've had a few arguments with this guy, and, mm. and you know, loved it. We've had some battles over the years, and I'm sitting there going, like, he remembers me in a class of whatever, but if I've argued something, and anyway, that was great. So all you had to do was pick a side and try to argue. Philosophy, uh, so philosophy was great that way. Psychology was a little bit more technical and I love the idea there was one professor I had I think uh, he did a study on uh, like it was like uh, you're on a plane and you're okay. past you know a uh, man and a woman are passing how right. do they pass each other in an airplane Fr oh bum oh, to bum oh right or frontal to frontal or mm. or bum to, yeah so there's a lot oh, of yeah he did that study and it got picked up in, uh, do you remember the movie uh, Fight Club? Yeah. It was quoted in Fight Club. No kidding. So apparently he's on the credits of that movie. Oh, right. So what's the use, answer? Uh, well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's what you think it is. That's right. Right? So uh, anyway, uh, I thought that was the coolest thing ever wow. when I heard that. So, you know, he's like, you don't know what is going to catch or what, you know, so yeah. you can study anything. So, you know, it, it was kind of a cool, so I, yeah, at the end of it, I got a degree in psychology and philosophy and it does help that I got into real estate after that. Sure. Because, yeah, you're sitting on the couch. Just with dealing so many with people, people in general, right? Just chit-chatting with, you know, yeah. what are you doing in your life? Why are you thinking of buying? Why are you thinking of selling? Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't be buying right now. Maybe you shouldn't be selling mm -hmm. right now. So there's a whole, you know, and then <clears throat> here's a weird one. I didn't know until I got into real estate. Uh, real estate's the third most stressful thing in people's lives. Yeah. Deciding to... So you mean the person who sells it or the people that you're dealing with? <laughs> the, cl the client going through it. It, yeah. it really is. There's the death of a family member, mm -hmm. divorce, and then selling your home is the next most stressful yeah. thing people go through. I home. can relate to that. I mean, I remember Jennifer and I bought our house years ago, and it was uh, more on her than me, but it was, it was very emotional. 
Yeah. And, and you know, it's like, am I doing the right thing? Yeah. You're always questioning yourself. Yeah. I know I want to do this, but am I doing it right? Am I going to afford it? Or who? All these things. Yeah. It's a big commitment. And you're going, right? And then you get the keys, and it's still. Yeah. Because now it's what real, but right? And what do I got to fix first? What's going to, you yeah. know, all that yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. well, let's jump ahead now to uh, uh, where you are in real estate. How long have you been doing that? I think I'm in the 17 years now. Wow. So it's a lot of psychology, philosophizing. Yeah. How did you get into that? So my, my wife's father-in-law yeah. is a is a owner of the Royal Page here right. in town, Doug Bain. Great mentor. Growing, I loved his lifestyle. He was a pretty happy-go-lucky guy. And yeah. I was just like, I want that guy's life. And mm-hmm. I'll just do what he does, right? There it so, is again. Well, Coachable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coachable. So, it's very, so I moved to, here's a, real estate-wise, uh, I always like to try to tell people getting into the business, it's a it's a popularity sport. Right. It's the best way to term <laughs> That's it. That's right? a... So it's how popular you are and how competitive you are together right. determines, you know, kind of your relationship with real estate and how right. successful Which it determines be. your income, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So if you're pretty popular, and, but you're not social, you might not do great. But you could, but you might not. But if you're competitive and you're pretty popular, you should do pretty well. So I yeah. moved to a town where I knew nobody. And the people I did know were my relatives were in real estate. Right. So all of a sudden it turns into I got to meet brand new people mm-hmm. in a city where I don't know anybody. Wow. And most people that are doing stuff in real estate already have a relationship with a real estate. Well, I was going to say that's a really giant step because it, it, that's uh, like most businesses, but especially that. It's a real relationship business. Yeah. You know, like uh, who am I, who's going to be my, and especially in a town like this. Yeah. I know lots of people in this town. I've lived here all my life. I think yeah. we've had the conversation. Yeah. I've said, who do I get? Yeah, because I know this person who supported me. I know this person who spent money with me. All those reasons. I know this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then this one over here I really like, but I don't. You know, I sort of have a relationship. Either like, and then how to decide? Like mm-hmm. that's a super competitive. Yeah, and it's gotten even more competitive. Like in, would you say cutthroat? Is it a cutthroat business? Oh yeah, yeah, big yeah. time. If they can, they'll throw you under the bus and back up again. Wow. Like that's it's, so. What keeps you staying in that world? Like I, to me, that'd be like, wow. I just don't want that stress. It, well, it, it, a couple things. One, it, it's very rewarding. Like the same feeling you get walking on stage. Yeah. Doing, okay. Doing something you get the same feeling from doing a deal. It's big money, mm-hmm. right? Ultimately, you can make great income. Yeah. Right. No one tells you when to go to work. No one tells you when not to work. No mm-hmm. one tells you when to take a vacation. But you can take a vacation every day. Yeah. Right. So there's so many good sayings. Like well, there's so no many ceiling. Days. There's no <laughs> ceiling on what you can make in real estate. There's also yeah. no floor. Right. So it's one right. of those like <laughs> you, you, you you go way up or, or we can go way down. Sink or swim. Yeah. So uh, there was a couple things. One, eighty uh, percent of realtors who get into the business uh, wash out within about two years. Yeah. It's kind of a pretty you know, common pretty... statistic in any sales. Yeah. Right? So then you got the uh, Prado rule. I think it's called. Like eighty percent of the deals go to twenty percent of the agents. Mm. And that's because they just do a good job. Uh, they've been around a lot. They're pretty popular. They know what they're doing. So it's one of those things where if you just stick into it, you should be able to figure it out. And then, again, me, uh, a little bit naive, but no problem talking to people. Mm-hmm. So you just put me in an open house every day, I'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. And that's what it was. So I just went and did an open house every single day. Not every day, sorry. Every day you could. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe twice on Saturday, once on Sunday, whatever. And you just figured out the math after that. And then it became like a sport. The numbers game. It's like you go to bat, you know, you got a 300 average, you're going to the Hall of Fame. Right. So you strike out seven times. Strike out, out seven times. times, yeah. So that same concept in real estate, really. Yeah. You do X amount of open houses every year, you'll get X amount of people that just need help at a certain time. Yeah. And, uh, the best advice I ever got was like sometimes they don't need to respect you. It's they, you're there. Yeah. If you're there, you'll get the business. At the right time. If you yeah. pick up the phone, you get the business. So many times nowadays, it's, uh, and it, uh, we could talk about real estate all day long, but, uh, if you call and an agent doesn't pick up their phone, that like to me that's always the biggest thing. Right? Mm. If it goes to voicemail, if they don't pick up their phone, I'm like, what the hell is that agent doing? Why am I not so important? Now some people will think, well, it's because I'm with another client, and you could be, right? But you might have just lost your next client, right? So I'm right. always I'm always picking up my phone. Never if someone texts me, I try to text back as, as quick as possible or call them. He's not bad at it. <laughs> yeah, but depends what it is, though. No, honestly, in all fairness, like, but this was this I, I was, teach people if they don't get back to me like right away sometimes, and then I'm thinking like, but they're doing other stuff right at the yeah, moment, and yeah. they kind of go, I can get to that one later. This one, 
you know, David makes me five dollars and this one makes me a thousand dollars. Yeah. Which one am I gonna go? I get yeah. that, right? Yeah. You, know? you gotta be able to prioritize your your, your yeah. time that way. And uh, that was my only real big I wouldn't even call them advantages, but mm. in real estate it was just do open houses as many days as you can and call and text people back immediately. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if you could do that, you could make your way in this world. Yeah. And that's and a lot of sacrifice too, Adam. Like you have a young family as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're talking Saturdays and Sundays and a lot of evenings. And but you know what's great? That's it's just my, part of it. Eh? My now wife's father was in the industry, so she grew up. Ah, uh, she no was ready for it? Yeah, I think she there's, a famous, she in for she's like, there's some famous quote. Somebody caught her on film saying something like that. It's like, where's dad? He's never heel. Like, <laughs> at, at, like, whatever age she said that. But like, it was just a testament to like, yeah, he was out there grinding away just like anyone else. Taking would, care right? of his family. So yeah, anyway, so that's that's kind of the start of it in real estate was just grinding it out. Uh, being honest, being, you know, compassionate and, and knowing where people are coming. Sometimes you tell them, you know what? Do not buy this house. If you buy this house, I'm not the agent for you. Because like, yeah. you're going to call me in three years and be like, what the hell did you do selling me this house? Like, there's yeah. a lot of that. Um, so, yeah. I that's, feel hard like- to, that's hard to come across there, too, I think, because, uh, well, real estate agents, and I know lots of them, they get picked on. They say, they're, are, are they one above or one below car salesmen? Oh, yeah, we're down there. We're down there. We're down right? there. If any, if the best would be, like, I would love, I thought of this, too. Like, do you do a podcast where you just go behind the scenes? Right. And be like, this is what this agent said to me. This is what mm. the this is what agent did to this agent. And you're just it's a bunch of bus drivers driving over people left and right. <laughs> like now, I think that in a in a weird way, it's good for the industry, yeah. right? Because you want that competitive, you want the drive, right? But do you, you don't necessarily want to pick the agent that has a transactional mindset mm. where they're only we call it commission breath, right? You got that's this all person. They care about that's all they care about. House. Yeah. As soon as they get the commission, they're done. You don't hear from them. like there's a lot of, uh, you know, you you want to know that someone's caring. Well, I was going to say the relationship should continue after that. Like, I know some, like, the day I move in, you're there. Yeah. Or or there's a card in the mailbox already, or there's something that says congratulations and kind of reassures that I made a good choice. Yeah. Because there is that, like you said earlier, that stress of, am I doing the right thing for me or my family? And there's lots of situations, you know, like... Well, I'm buying this, or I'm getting rid of this because it was divorced, or mm-hmm. you know, all that. that, that yeah, stuff. we go back to that, right? If yeah. you think about the stressors in people's lives, right? So it's death of a family member, yeah, divorce, and then selling your home. There's a lot of times I'm doing two or three of right, those, right, right. So then you got to really either <laughs> somebody dies, got to sell the estate, sure. or sure, yeah, you're, you're you're sitting down with someone. So are you? So that psychology side then kind of kicks in. On uh, do oh. people? Le- I guess what I'm do people lean on you for that emotional support? Did, you know, your understanding and like you're kind of like a friend in the moment, aren't you? You're you're definitely needed, yeah. right? And and sometimes you're the necessary evil, right? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. got to take a bath on this to move on, yeah. right? Like you got to you're the voice of reason, but they might not like it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, back 2007, 2008, there was a lot of times I'm sitting at coffee tables and there was a couple of bad conversations there, right? Yeah. People are upset, people are crying, but you had to be that. I don't know what like that 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 calm in the storm of like, hey, you either sell today or you're gonna take a little less tomorrow, right? Like right now I got you ranked, up. maybe you're the fifth best house out of 30. Right. But we're still not getting the offer today. Like uh, it, it can be very demanding that mm-hmm. way on you, right? You're going home. Like people always think like in the, in the market that we've had the last, I don't know, better part of 10 years, it's been a seller's market. Yeah. Right? And it's been even more of a seller's market in the last few years, right? Yeah. And it's only now switching. So <clears throat> people, that have gotten into business in the last 10 years have no clue. Well, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I've, I've observed that from afar. I've like seen a lot just... of people that I've known and oh, I'm getting in real estate, I'm getting in real estate. And some of them are like, I'm going to do it part-time. It'll be a side hustle. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking, oh, that, that doesn't work in real estate, I don't think. Uh, and then the work that's involved. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people jump in. So the, the, the issue now, that, yeah, so you're going you're gonna to get stressed from one side or the other. Yeah no matter what the market's doing, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're either making the sellers happy and the buyers are upset or your buyers are happy and your sellers are upset. But <clears throat> in those markets, you're dealing with more of the people that are kind of getting upset. So for example, in the last 10 years, a lot of people had buyers and they were getting a little upset because they couldn't get the house they wanted. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, they had to pay 10, 20, 30, 40. Over. Over asking. Yeah. And they had to go with no conditions. Like that's pretty upsetting yeah. stuff, but people started doing it. And once the 
culture and everyone got conditioned. It was kind of a normal thing to do. And yep. once everyone jumps off the bridge, I guess you're going to do it too. Right. Same thing no applies. home inspections. Yeah. That's the one that scared me. Yeah. So now it's the opposite, right? Mm. It, it's going to flip. It's flipping now, right? It's slightly balanced right now, I think. But, you know, it will continue to slide the other way until mm -hmm. it becomes more of a buyer's market, which is great. Buyers are harder to come by because they're scared to buy. They mm. need to sell a house in order to buy. But, man, you can make a, a great deal happen and, uh, you know, get, get that next house, get that bigger house and um, in, in the buying uh, market it's it's and and but then the stress of the seller that's where i was going with this is it's pretty pretty tough because yeah. you know every day they're thinking about it right and every day they're like why isn't my home sold and so there's some uh there's some stress there that you get I, I call it like seeing like a nursing blood in a hospital right they get they just get used to it yeah right so you know the more you get used to it the more you can calm people down the more you can kind of keep them up because they're like what's wrong with my house why is my house selling? why did that neighborhood house sell mine didn't know like mm. there's a lot there and you know i i hope the best for everybody but i feel like there's going to be a lot of agents getting out of business in the next so many years because it's tough to make those phone calls yeah yeah you know and you got to, and it's constant you like I, I find like uh, any any real estate person I know, you're always on, mm -hmm. always all the time, and you know you're out having a coffee, and sooner or later, uh, and I've done it too. You were sitting out having a beer or something, having talking about one thing, and all of a sudden it's like, so what's the, what's the market like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. And it's just you're always on all the time. I think and that's uh, got to be tough it, to deal with. Comes with the territory. That's sure. nurses and blood. It's the yeah, same thing, yeah. but let's call it nurses and puke. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. It's the same thing. You just get used to it. Um, uh, m some of my favorite deals are vacation deals. Right? Yeah. So yeah. if I'm on vacation and I put a deal together, nothing feels better. Yeah. It's amazing, right? And you got someone maybe doing the legwork here for you, but you're away. And you're still making the deal. Sipping cocktails on the deal. Yeah, it the sounds, deal. It sounds yeah. great, but like yeah. you have to be on your phone constantly. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the, the better agents are the ones that are getting to the client sooner, faster, mm -hmm. more productive, giving them honest feedback. So, yeah. Now, before real estate, what did you do for for income uh, work? Uh, university, I worked at Kelsey's as a server. Yeah. So I was uh, that was fun. You'd I be really a, like I was going to say you'd be a fun server. I bet. I was always a team guy, right? Yeah, so yeah. you need me to help you run your food. You're no problem. You need yeah. me to grab a drink order from that. No problem. But yeah. you know what happened? I would neglect my tables. Uh. So I was that guy. <laughs> I was too much of a team guy that way. So, yeah. uh, but it was fun. I really liked it. Uh, you know, dealing with those people, it it was really fun. You got you always had cash on you. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I felt like a millionaire yeah. when I was in university. Always had cash. Right? Cause I always yeah. always I always had cash on me. It was it was good that way. But I was working. I think we were easily working twenty to thirty hours a week. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden you throw that on the pile of you're in the gym. Right. Everything two else or three. You know. Talking about, yeah. And then so what had to suffer was my uh, full time school to almost part-time I did the bare I did whatever I could to just be a full-time student but right. with the course load that was almost half time yeah. Right. yeah so uh but yeah it just took me longer to get so then mostly career. so you worked a little bit but mostly then real estate has been your career that's what it's yeah been. and then odd jobs like sure uh, like uh I did a little construction with my dad running uh utilities to houses maybe a week in the summer just yeah. because again I was so de in demand with volleyball I couldn't yeah. take a, a consistent job but you had to do something I would run camps and stuff I, I ran volleyball camps here in town that was fun uh but yeah it wasn't really a, a job job so mm -hmm. to speak until you know uh I didn't even see uh serving as a job no no it was it was weird like you were just having fun and I got some cash going <clears throat> yeah which is kind of weird like you know I get called by the manager hey can you come in early and uh you know spray down the patio and we'll you know we'll get your lunch and I'm like yeah sure like you don't even have to give me lunch I'll just come in and do it right like it was yeah. just like a it was a really cool vibe when we were working there great people um it was uh Kelsey's east of Adelaide so it was uh, oh okay it was, I think it was the first or it's the it's the oldest Kelsey's in existence right? yeah I think that's the claim wow. to fame there I don't know if it was the first one ever I think there's another one but it's it's now I know it's the oldest one so it, I, it's either cool one or the other but anyway really cool people working out of there um and uh yeah then obviously it helps with uh, getting into the sales business right you're mm -hmm. always asking people if you want gravy with your french fries right right you're always yeah yeah, the bill. Up the bill, yeah. Um, but being social and it helped with real estate and uh yeah met a lot of great people but so yeah, then right. okay so we've gotten through there and we've gotten to where you are now in real estate and amidst all of this in the last few years uh you came up with something called sarnia sings 
And that's really, um, and I'm grateful that I've been able to be a part of that every year. And I, I've, I've seen behind the scenes uh, some of the efforts uh, and, and the emotion that goes into it as well um, that comes out of it on that day. Um, how did, what, where did this come from and why the attachment to mental health and suicide awareness? So when I was really going back to a sports analogy kind of thing here, uh, <clears throat> when I was playing baseball, we got really good and we, had, we got to go to the Eastern Canadian Championships in Halifax. Wow. We were in grade five or six. That's huge, though. It was, yeah. yeah. We were, it, little, <laughs> grade five or six, like, hello. Right? Little uh, little Orangeville, right? Out of the blue, mm-hmm. becomes good at baseball. Yeah. And uh, so we go to the Eastern Canadian Championship. Well, obviously, we got all the fly there, right? It's a big thing. So we said, well, let's go to the mall and see if we can get donations to help. Oh. You know, so, like, show up in your little uniform, baseball yeah. uniform, stand in the Orangeville Mall. Right. And shake people down for money. <laughs> Right, the next hustle. Yeah, here so, we go. Uh, well, and good for you for earning it. Well, it, it, the weird thing was, uh, obviously nobody wanted to do it, right? Because you, you had to show up your scheduled time. And right. I remember my mom getting calls from other parents saying, "Hey, do you mind if that?" Because I didn't mind doing it, right? And not only that, I was freaking good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right on. So I would go up to there people. There he is in his cute little uniform with that smile and let him go. But I remember <laughs> some very vivid things. I remember being able to, like, if you didn't look at me, I'm going to come get you. Right. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I would, until you looked at me. If you looked at me and you gave me a smile, I'd maybe let you by. Oh, okay. But if you didn't look at me, if you didn't give me the time of day, I took that personally. Right. Like, hey, our baseball team did really good. And we're, we're doing this. We, we are this good that we can go and do this thing. And the, oh, we're putting Orangeville on the map. We're getting articles written about us, blah, blah, blah. And we just, we got to come up with some money for uh, the flights and stuff to get us there. Do you want to help us? So, like, I... I, I want to give you money right now. Just right. For... <laughs> I, that's my sales pitch, right? Yeah, well... I, I learned so much from that little, me. that little thing, uh, you know, etched in my brain from now being in sales and talking to people and blah, blah, blah. But from the charity angle, like... Who knew people would be so happy to do charity work, right? Mm-hmm. And again, this whole vibe of, uh, you know, uh, sales, right? Mm-hmm. Being on stage, uh, volleyball, performing, right? Like you're, there's this perform, and it's the same thing in charity. When you put together that week or those months leading up, a little bit of work, but that show day, it, it, there's that feeling that is just like, I can't believe we did that. Right. And it turned out great. Or almost perfect or but better than expected whatever right that feeling is incredible mm-hmm. so when you go ask people for money it, it comes from that good spot yeah. where it's going to be like, it's going to be worth your time so to you know zero in on certain things i had uh, an experience with uh, real estate down in las vegas where they're for a networking event and uh, one of the the person who organized it was d- doing a bandioki so you yep. go to the tropicana there's a band there, and there's like 200 songs that they can sing. And if you know one of them, you can go up on stage and sing with the band. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if there was 200 people there. I doubt it. But, like, I think there was, it was over 100. But there was there was enough people there to kind of give you the heebie-jeebies. Like, oh, my God, I, this is more than a karaoke. Right. And the Tropicana has, like, almost stadium seating, right? Yep, so it's yep. a weird, like, it's it's kind of, it's a cool set. And uh, <clears throat> so the girl organizing it was really scared that it wasn't going to work out. No one's going to do it. She's like, Adam, please, please do it. I helped promote it. So I went to Toronto and I did this little sketch and video for all of Royal Page Canada. Oh, yeah, right. I put the president of uh, Royal Page in my in my passenger seat. <laughs> I got the president of Genworth Canada, who insures all the mortgages in Canada. She was in the back seat of, of my little minivan. I had little cameras all over the place, and I did a carpool karaoke. Right. Well, that goes kind of viral in our Royal Page viral, so to speak. Sure. But thousands of agents across Canada saw that and they thought it was the best thing ever. So then a lot of people wanted to go to this bandioki thing the following month or whatever it was. And here's this girl going, no one's going to do it. you got to do it. Get up there. I'll be like, oh, I don't know. Chug, chug, chug. Like, you know, <laughs> yep. get the liquid courage. Going. Uh, I know. <laughs> and then uh, I went and looked at the list and it was uh, Kings of Leon, You Somebody. I was oh, like, wow. I looked up. I was like, I know I love this song. And I looked it up. It's like, not that many lyrics. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll try it, right? I'll try it. So I get up there and uh, I sing that. And it was okay enough 
that a bunch of realtors were like, oh my God, I didn't know you could sing. I was like, that sounded good. He's like, yeah, you were great, fantastic. The band was great. And you know, the band was there with you. They're like, okay, ready? Here you go. Yeah, yeah. And they're just, they're there to help you, right? So I, I got that feeling from that. And I thought it was really cool. And uh, there should be events like that all the time, right? So I had that experience. And I was like stewing about how cool that was for me to be up. And then it was home run after home run all night. Yeah. Everyone was okay to go up, right? And Once you broke the ice. A couple of bombs up there, but like whatever. Everyone's having a good time. And so I wanted to bring that experience back here. And so I do a little research. I find this great band in Toronto who does the same thing. Yeah. But they have 650 songs. Right. And then I was like, what if I gave, you know, Sarnia a chance to like, because I went up to the band. I was like, man, you guys must have had a great, sorry, the band in Tropicana. You must have, like, this must have been one of your better shows. He's like, no, it's like this every night. It's like, what? He's like, yeah. 10% of any audience can sing. So we know when we got 200 people here, there's going to be 20 that you guys right. can actually crush And if you get 20, you can kill a couple hours. That's a perfect show, right? Yeah. So I took that math here. And I was like, oh, there's got to be enough singers here in Sarnia. Especially in Sarnia, right? right? We're like and a then, hub for that. So all of a sudden I was like, okay, let's do this. I, I called the band. I was like, if, if I can get this going, are you, can I book you guys? They're like, yeah, sure. And then I reached out to Liv Gogus, who's a family yep. friend of ours. Yep. She's big in the theater uh, here in town. And I was like, hey, uh, do you think we can get like 10 or 15 singers? And I need good ones. She's like, yeah, what do you need? So I told her the thing. She's like, I think it's unbelievable. So uh, I got her in the car and I did the carpool karaoke. Yep. And that's how we started the marketing. We tried it with her first and it went, right? A lot of yep. people were like, oh, this is cool. I want to do that. And we're like, oh, it's a show. What do you mean it's a show? It's a charity show for... And then that's when we got to uh, St. Cla- or uh, Sarnia Community Foundation. Yeah. And they were like, you know, mental health is getting worse and worse, needing more funds than ever. And, and uh, you know, the more, like, it was suggested, the more my eyes were open to, like, looking at some stuff. And then, yeah, there was, uh, there's definitely a need for it, especially here in Sarnia, I think, anywhere. But um, tie the charity angle to mental health and... That's really it in a it, nutshell. And, it, and it's, uh, it's worked every year. It's been, uh, I know, a lot of work on your part. And, and but it's fun. Right. That's right. You know, it's turned into, I, I, was, I was just out having a pint somewhere uh, two nights ago and uh, um, sitting with someone who'd been in Starnia Sings and she asked, are they doing that again? I'd like to try that again. You know, yeah. that was a lot. I'd like to do it again. I, yeah. I and it's almost like uh, being a, a part of some, like there's a family that's been created. A little bit of a community, Everybody yeah. that's been in Sarnia Sings, you know, at some point we're going to have a big reunion or something, yeah. right? Because it's a moment in their life. Yeah. And when I say a moment, like it's one song, pretty much unrehearsed. Oh, you, yeah. you might get like 30 seconds of a practice the day of the event. Yeah. So the band shows the, up. Everybody just so you guys understand. Out. Yeah, this is we great. We get a band that shows up from Toronto. Like I said, 650 songs. Professional they're, band. Oh, they're fantastic. They all play in other bands, yeah. right? So they get together. They do this on the side. But they show up 4 o'clock the day of the show. Then we get, uh, uh, after they set up, between, let's say, 6 and 7, by the time people are starting to come in the door, if they're worried about you and your song because maybe there's a couple of breaks that they're uncertain about or there's a certain key difference, you're asking for a different key, they go through all that with you. And then we try to run through everyone. There's kids yeah. in the show too. Yeah. So we try to make sure the kids are comfortable. Sometimes they're the most professional. And you literally get maybe a verse and then we kick you off stage yep. and then you, somebody else does the verse. So there's really not much of a rehearsal. And this is all ages too. I want to be clear too. I think... Yep. Uh, uh, it's sort of been said in the past, like from nine to ninety is yeah. is long acceptable as you can sing, in there. As we, long as you can yeah. sing, that's what we care about. So then we put them on stage, and it's we our goal is to sell it out. We've usually sold out every year. Last year, uh, I think we're just shy, but usually we sell out every yeah. year. Yeah, which means you know four to six hundred people are yeah. watching you sing. So again, it's an experience that you you uh, you'll never get. But again, because I've had that experience, I'm like, I want other people to feel that rush. Mm-hmm. If you well, can... we talked about that through COVID, you know, like we were trying to could we live stream something or whatever, mm-hmm. but we we didn't because you you and you were right. Like, it's not the same vibe. No, there's no there's no energy in yeah. the room, and it, yeah. it's tough. It's tough to get that. So. Yeah. So I'm glad we didn't do it. Yeah, well, I agree. During COVID, even though you know mental health during COVID went through the roof and totally. uh, definitely needed it. But uh, for the sake of the charity event, I think it was good. So another Sarnia Sings coming up? Oh, yeah. And now it's like, it's got to be done. Yeah. And 
it now it just seems to be it's on your plate. It, it's easier every year for us to organize it because it yeah. seems to be singers try to come out. We always thought, oh, are we going to find another group of singers? Right. <laughs> It's not an issue, and they it's they come they come out every year, and and they're they're great. And then the previous singers want to come and support the show. They come and see it, or they tell their friends about it, or yeah. whatever. And it they want to come year. back. But you know what's crazy? <laughs> it's the tough. band, the band that we bring out, uh, they've talked about this, and they're like, "Man, you should do like." There was someone in Hamilton, I think, that wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. And we tried to get them to touch base, or and then there was a a, a real estate angle. Again, a Royal Page person, and you know they heard about it. like, would you, would you organize it? So then it turned into, can we franchise this? Right. <laughs> can this be a company somehow that Why we not? just, you know, make a kit and then just send it to every little town, and they can have their own charity event in, yeah. in a kit? So uh, that's where it's gotten to, and it's been it's been great. We've raised uh, usually raise about um, about twelve thousand dollars for charity every year, mm-hmm. uh, split between Canada Mental Health uh, or uh, Canada Mental Health and, and Saint Clair Child and Youth. Um, and so it stays local, which yeah. is great too. Um, and yeah, so uh, and it's it's the other thing that's been a huge eye opener again uh, is the mental health side of it. Is people will approach me with, you know, stories that I'm just like, really, yeah. And it's mental health and suicide, so it's it's both. And you know, we're not we're we're kind of heavy on the mental health side of it, but in there is the suicide angle of it, and uh, it's very difficult to talk about. Uh, Sarnia's had its you know, tough share of, mm-hmm. you know, that. And, um, you know, you, you, you feel it from an obligation more than anything to do this event for, um, It's you important, know, Adam, that you, you've in, done this. And, uh, um, and I remember when you first asked me, you just gave me that 30 second pitch and I was like, I'm in. Yeah. Like, cause, uh, it's, it, it hits every one of us, right? You know, I would say, uh, I always it, say if, if everyone can win, yeah, then it's a great, little shelf right so the charity wins because it, it raises money yeah um the singers win because they love the rush right yeah. and and the audience wins because they they see a good show so it's a trifecta in yeah. a way of like it it runs itself now right because of and that. you win because then, you're having an impact i think in, in so many more uh, yeah it, it's a it's one. a fun way to obviously you're giving back it feels good you know and and that's kind of selfish that it feels good that no way, but i think it's definitely needed and again so drawing from what you're talking, it's funny, but like you draw on these little stories of my life, you're like, of course, of course you do that, right? And then you, of course that, you know, if I were to tell my high school friends, oh, this is what, they'd be like, of course you did that. You were always easy to like. Dewey did more. <laughs> <laughs> my sister was a uh, valedictorian of, uh, uh, valedictorian. she was president of our, our school one year. There's 2,200 kids in our school. Wow. So she always had to put on events and stuff like that. And she always just, you know, I'm a year younger than her. And she's like, hey, I uh, didn't do anything for Halloween this year. Do you want to? What should we do? I was like, well, let's get everyone on stage and dance in their costumes. She's like, really? I was like, yeah, let's do it. So our school was big enough. We had to have three lunches just to spread them out oh, yeah, through right. all the school. So I went to my calculus teacher, Mr. Jaeger. I was like, hey, uh, I'm not going to be in class today. He's like, what? Why? I was like, doing it. He's like, oh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> like no problem, right? Right. And uh, went on stage with, you know, we had some music going. I found a microphone and a all of a sudden we get music going and we're just bringing people up one by one and then it just turned out to be a fun three lunches everyone you could go out and eat for lunch but everyone stayed in to watch the little parade of people who are dressed up for Halloween my sister was like that was amazing it was, it was just a pure in the moment yep. you know thing and and uh yeah you look at all these little stories and you know of course yeah of course you should be doing something charity angle and of course you're doing something like that on stage and of course you want to sing and of course you want to, you know, uh, everyone else to have a good time. And, you know, it, it's, yeah, it just seems like it, it fits. And right? he's a bit of the opening act at Cernia Sings. <laughs> Someone's got to break the ice, like you said, right. right? So I'm not afraid to break the ice. That's and right. It's never, uh, it's never about uh, me being good. It's about me hopefully uh, putting everyone else at ease. Because I know what it's like. You're up there. If you've never sang before, it's, it's, uh, your brain and stomach are doing flips. I get it. I flips. Get it. It's nuts. And you're doing that in front of so many people. It's fun. Yeah. I can't believe uh, how this time has just flown by already. Um, and I really, easiest interview ever. <laughs> but I, I've learned so much uh, sitting here listening to you that I, uh, some I knew, but a lot, you know, a lot I didn't know. And I'm glad that we were able to share this time. And uh, looking forward to Sarnia Sings, and I'm sure we'll get uh, some dates out there soon. Or... Let me, before you cut me off, let me think of okay, this. Okay, right. Just we're spitballing here. What if we go outside of Sarnia to try to find more talent? 
I don't see why not. I mean, I know it's called Sarnia Sings, but if they come... It happens here, right? But if they, it comes here... And, and if we bring and, someone from Windsor yeah. who's a standout, we, we go to London, yeah. we host... Maybe you can say they got to come to Sarnia for the audition at least. Maybe. So the... I know where he's going but, here with but this. But I think, isn't it cool to go and host auditions in London? Yes. And then all of a sudden people are like, what's going on? But they'll yeah. come and try out. And all yeah. of a sudden we find the diamond in the rough. And you're like, oh, right. you're coming. But they're coming to Sarnia to sing. But they sing. come to Sarnia to sing. I don't see why not. Yeah, but if we go hunting for a few singers out there, you know what I mean? Why not? Because it's then it's, again, the talent. And you know, stage. the thing here too, Adam, is there's there's people in Sarnia that know people in other towns. Right. It's not... You need, it's not who you know, it's who you don't know that will bring yep. somebody into that. Why not? Because remember, they filmed it all, right? Yep. And that film, uh, we sold not very many, but you can stream it. Yeah. But that's where that's where the charity will grow, is yeah. streaming. Because if all of a sudden it's 100%. someone in London, someone in Windsor, family can't make it, they'll stream it yep. You know, live. The video quality was great. Um, yeah. I yeah, the Imperial Theater is a great place to have it there too, and and they're they're really supportive of. Because as much as it's a chair, I'd love to charge everyone hundred dollars a seat, but like sure. there's a certain cap level on yeah, yeah. what what a nice night out would be. But I think the angle is the. Oh, it's got to find a place to work to have dinner and a sing. That's dinner right. and a sing. Yeah. Sings. Anyway, we're carrying. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Right. Uh, and I know we're probably going to be talking about that more as we get ready to wrap up here. Adam, thank you so much for your time today. No I know we're going to be talking more after I turn the camera off, but. Um, do this like I say every time click the like and the love yes but click the share button it's the most important button you can do to share Adam's story and all the other people that I interview here on the show but as always that's all the time I got for you this week have a great week and an even better weekend we'll see you next time right here in the show